how we can design a very basic um, very basic website using HTML and CSS. So let's get straight into it. So HTML, which is hypertext markup language, um, is used to write the basic code for a website. Whereas the CSS, which is a cascading style sheet, is used to give some beauty, uh, some design to our HTML code. And then JavaScript is used to give some interactivity so that when you click on something, maybe you want to submit a form and you click on it, you know, it, it, it sends that, it encodes that form uh, to the, it sends it to the, to the server. So, you know, um, so let's get straight into it. Usually the first thing you do, if you click, if you type your, the exclamation mark, you see these preloaded information, this default HTML information. And if you just select that, it pops in. And I'll explain what every line means. So this is the HTML. So obviously document type, doc type HTML. And then um, get that back here. Yeah. HTML, this is the language we want it to be in English. So a HTML document typically will have a head and a body. So we have a head and a body. And inside the head, there are some important information. So these are default information, which are important. So we have the metadata, and the metadata are just those information that give us information or data about the HTML document. So metadata, the cassette, which is a character uh, set, or the encoding character is UTF-8. So UTF-8 here just tells, it's a form of um, encoding of, of language. So every alphabet or number, it has a coded representation on the UTF-8. Now another metadata is viewports, which just gives us, um, gives further instruction to your browser. So you're obviously the browser that you use to access your website gives information on how is how the info, how everything is meant to display. So you can see here content with, you can see device with, okay? So device with initial scale 1.0. So those are default information. They come in as default information. Now, the next thing is we have the body and there are some other things we can put. So if I do control enter, I can put more metadata information. I can say name equals author. So let me put my name as the author of this document. And then the contents, I can then put my name Emmanuel, I can say Wogo, I can put my middle name as a generic. And I have to close it with an angle, angle bracket. I can put more, if you control enter, a new line, I can put more metadata information. I can say keywords. So keywords, I can put keywords and then content. So depending on, so let's create, let's create um, a hypothetical website, obviously for a farm. So let's say fish, uh, goat, uh, sheep, you know, agriculture, farm. So these are just keywords we want to put. So that when someone is searching the internet, someone goes on Google and types, um, you know, show you they're interested in buying feeds for their cows or their goats or something, and you, you want your website to pop up as one of the suggested. So that's the essence of the keywords for the search engine to search. And then the title of our, our website, let's call it um, Afro, Afro Farms. Now this should, so that is Afro Farms. It's not showing there's something wrong somewhere. Yeah, we haven't put our angle bracket there. The moment I do it, if you look there at the top there where my mouse is hovering, you see the Afro Farms, which is our title. You can see so it is the head, it's part of the head, Afro Farms. You can see my photo there. I haven't added the image, but it's I'm obviously getting it from my if you've looked at my website, the one I use for my consultations, the one I designed last year, it has the same photograph that is there. So it's probably picking it up from my previous website. 
because I haven't put any image in the head here. You can obviously add an image in the head. So this is generally information that we want to put inside the head. I'll explain. So this is called the head element in HTML. And this head element has an opening tag. It has a closing tag. So you can see the closing tag has a spark slash, has a forward slash rather. It has a forward slash and then head. The body element has an opening body tag, has, has a closing tag. You can see the closing tag. Everything is inside the HTML element. You can see that the HTML has an opening tag HTML and a closing tag HTML. This language English is an attribute. Okay. Anything that anything extra you put inside a tag is an attribute. This is the attribute name and this is the attribute value English. Now let's move in. We, 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 we won't see anything yet until we start typing inside the body. Now, if I just type something random inside the body, you begin to see things on the website. You can see that. Okay. But it's advised that you don't just type randomly. Someone might say, oh, why not just type randomly into your website? It would not make sense. And the reason why it wouldn't make sense is because you need structure. The DOM, the document object model has needs a structure. Um, so that when you go into your CSS to style it, if you have a very structured, a very organized HTML document, it will be very easy to do your CSS styling. If you have a chaotic, haphazardly designed or haphazardly written HTML document, then your CSS styling will become chaotic. Okay, because you now have to target so many things at the same time. Meanwhile, if you have an organized, you can use one simple, one single CSS code to target a wide range of HTML. So you could have just a much easier CSS, you know, code. So let's create, let's, let's create um, a header. Inside the body, we typically have a header. We have the main parts and we have the footer. So let's put that. So the header element you can see it has an opening header and a closing header a closer closing tag now let's put our main our main tags so opening and closing and let's put the footer the footer tags so that's what this is the body everything inside here is the body element okay everything so we have the opening tag of the body a closing tag of the body we have the contents of the body so everything the tags and the contents are the elements now inside the header let's create a header now let's use a h1 heading inside the header i'll show you what a header is you know the top horizontal area at the top now inside that header let's create a heading inside the header and let's call that heading let's say welcome to afro farms it's going to show that you can see it's welcome to afro farms now under the heading let's put a paragraph okay welcome to afro farms we help sort all all your agro needs so agricultural needs let's say we help sort all your agro needs something like that okay so that's our header let's leave that let's go into the main now inside the main let's create two sections okay so we can have a section we can have a section element and let's create another section. Let's, so let's have two sections. We'll have more videos. If you don't, if you're not following everything now, you can watch it again. And obviously, we'll still have more videos where we'll now break down things into smaller bits um, and focus on, you know, um, channel our focus on smaller bits. Now let's create two sections. Inside each section, let's have a H2 heading. So a H1 heading is the boldest heading. The least bold heading is a H6, so a H2 is close to H1. A H5 will be small. So let's use a H2 and create this heading. So let's create a heading and let's call this fish, fish farm. 
<coughs> or let's say fish equipment fishing equipment let's put or let's say fish yeah fish fish area fish region or fish whatever what do we call a fish zone <laughs> just trying to see something clever to define that so the fish zone fish farm um, fish zone yeah let's put it that way <clears throat> let's put a list let's create an, an unordered list so where there are two forms of list, ordered list, unordered list. An ordered list is, an, is a list that has an order like one, but one, two, three, four, five. And an ordered list doesn't have a number. They might just, you know, bullet points. You just list them with bullet points or dots. And you see exactly what's going to happen. Now let's create this unordered list. So you have UL. Inside that you have an LI, which is lists. And if you look here, you can see the dots has appeared. Where my Look at my mouse there. A dot has appeared because it's going to be an, an unordered list. Now let's put an anchor inside. So the A is an anchor. Let's put an anchor and let's let's uh, call these let's call this list uh, let's say fishnet. Okay, so fishnet. You can see it has appeared there. But one thing you can notice is that this fishnet is not clickable. So it's a list anyway. If we want it to become, if we want it to become a link, so one thing is, if you want it to be a link, it's usually advised that you put a div. So you can say you can do that. Um, you can you can put a div. It's usually advised you put a div. But let's let's not put a div. Let's just make it simple. Okay, let's make it simple. Let's not. Do too much at a time. Now let's put another list and let's put an anchor and let's call this fish hook. Okay, so fish hook. So we have an an an, an, an unordered list uh, that contains fish nets and fish hook. Now if we want to turn these texts into hypertext or hyperlinks. All we need to do is to use the href. So href equals, let's put a placeholder. You can see that it's now clickable, it's a link. And if we do the same here, href equals, and we put that, it's clickable. Let's go and find the website on Fishnet. Uh, Fishnet. Let's see, there's a website. Let's use this website. Um, I hope they wouldn't be offended I'm using their website. Let's copy that um, and let's put it inside there. Let's put the URL there. Just so I can demonstrate that if I click on Fishnet, you can see it takes me to these websites. Um, and then I want to go back. Where's my... Okay. Uh, yeah, going back to... So I've come back. Okay. Now, if I want that website to open somewhere else, I'll put a target. I'll say target equals blank, for instance. If I do target equals blank, if I click on that, it opens it in a different tab. You can see my website has taken it to a different tab. But the default will be for it to open within the same tab. Or if you want it to open a separate tab, then you say target equals blank. You can always watch it again. Um, so let's go. So this is the fish, fish zone. In the second section, let's put another H2 header or heading, not header. And let's call it uh, goat. Let's say goat farm. Let's use farm. Fish farm, let's say goat farm as the heading. You can see that. Let's create an ordered list this time around. Just show you. So instead of using UL, which is unordered, let's use OL, which is ordered list. Same structure, you put your list LI. As soon as I put the LI, you can see number one has appeared. It's going to be an order one, two, three, depending on how many items you want to have on your list. So we have and let's put our anchor. So the A is anchor. 
let's us call this one goats goats feeds let's say goats feeds control enter will take us to a new line let's put another let's put an anchor okay and let's call this goats clippers so give it clippers for clipping the hair so we have an ordered list goat feeds goat clippers if we want to make these clickable which means we want to make these words or this text to become hypertexts or hyperlinks so you can see the hypertext in, in html hypertext markup language hypertext hyperlinks then what we need to do is to put the h ref okay and let's put let's put a, a placeholder oh, a placeholder is hash you also serves as a placeholder so in next when you get the actual link you want you can just put that hey the the, the link h uh, url there let's do the same for goat clippers so href equals let's put the placeholder okay so you can click those if you want it anyone to open separately or outside same thing targets equals blank now and that's so if you click there it will open in a separate tab okay it's going to open a separate tab once you do that blank now so we have this section uh okay so everything i put inside here is something let me copy ctrl x it's meant to be inside this section yeah because yeah it's meant, so it's inside this section Okay, this is, this, this is everything here, the section element inside the section. Now, let's create our footer. Usually the footer can be used for things like, um, the footer can be used for things like, you know, your, your copyrights. So let's say copyright. So this is a paragraph. You can type it without a paragraph. It's very possible. You can just type your footer <coughs> usually i want to put it in a paragraph copyright 2024 um afro farm afro farm something like this so that's your copyright information or you can do something like that as your copyright information so that's the footer. So this is actually what our HTML document looks like. You can see it's just a very simple, basic website. It doesn't look appealing. Um, you can see that's the header. The header has the H1 heading. It has a paragraph. This is one section, which has a H2 heading and has an unordered, an unordered list. This is, is the second section that has a H2 heading and an ordered list. And this is our footer. Everything in, everything here is inside the body of the HTML. It's within the body. Okay? Everything is within the body. Now, let's see if we can style it. One thing we haven't done is we anything we write in our CSS now would not happen. Would not reflect here because this is an external css you can style within you can put a style within your html which means you can do an internal um css okay you can do an internal styling but usually uh i want to keep my html as html alone and then have an external css now for me to be able to access this css for well, anything i put in the, any styling modification or styling effect i put in my css for it to reflect on my html code i have to put a link here so i'll come still inside the head i'll put link and i'll put rel which is relationship and the relationship is going to be a style sheet okay a style sheet then i'll put a href href is for link and what's the link What's the name styles.css? So I'll type the name there styles.css and always close that with a closing angle bracket. What that means is if I hover over this href, 
the link there you can see what it says follow link control plus click if i do that it takes me into my css sheets so that's what you want to do you want to create that link now let's go into css and style this good looking website now the first thing we want to do is we want to give some beauty to our heading to our header okay so what you do is you write header and then you have your curly brackets now let's give it let's say background color let's give it a background color of bisque you can see that you can see the beauty is beginning to come you can say oh i've put some background color on our header and you can see that the header includes this and that now let's push everything to the center text align let's say center you notice that the spelling of the center is t-e-r not t-r-e so it's an american spelling not a british english spelling it's american spelling so t-r so text align center what that has done is it has pushed everything to a central position a centralized everything so what else can we do to our header? You can always change the color. You can decide to change the color of the text. You can say um, color. So you don't have to say font color, anything, just color to change the color of the font. Uh, we can do the color that I find indigo. Uh, so indigo, like we can say indigo. Yeah, welcome to Afro Farms. Indigo, mm, not sure if indigo is particularly the prettiest color here. Another thing I want to do is I want to create some space between the words, text, and the border. So the border is the border of this this color, this bisque, this orangey background. That's the the edge is the border. So I want to create some space, and I'll use padding to do that. Now, let me say padding of uh, 10% and see how much. So that looks too much. That padding looks too much. Let's say 3% and see. Um, if we say 1% padding, yeah, looks better, doesn't it? So we've done something like that. Another thing we could do is we could change the type of text, font. So we could change the font family. Okay, so the font family, uh, let's use, let's see what serif. Yeah, let's do that. Another thing you could do is, you might want to change the font weight. If you think it's too light or too bold, you might want to change that, but let's leave that. So font family serif, we've put a 1% padding around it to create some space between the text or the font the text and and the border or the margin the border not margin <coughs> i'll explain the difference between border padding and margin let's leave the so the header looks the header looks pretty doesn't it yeah so let's go and modify we have two sections we can modify them together or we might want to target i'll show you in the next video how to target each section or each part of a html using ids and classes but in this particular video let's target the sections together so we say section we don't need we don't need the angle bracket so section or curly bracket now for the sections let's give them a background color what background color will make sense there? Let's use gray. Let's use a gray. Let's see. Mm, looks too dark. Dark gray. I'm not sure why dark gray is lighter than gray. Okay, so let's use this one color dark gray as our background color. What else can we do? Um, let's see if we can push these if we do text align if we do text align center it's going to push the text or it's going to leave these ribbons it's gonna leave the the dots and the one two ribbons so we don't want to do that let's take that out 
what we can do is how about you put a padding on the left side so padding left and let's see what 40 percent padding on the left and let's do. see what 40 percent padding much. on the left will do it looks too much let's see what 30 percent padding to the left will do uh is it centralized mm, a bit maybe 35 yeah pushed it a bit more yeah towards the center so if we want it to be in center we could do that or we could even say 33 or 32 percent um yeah maybe something like that you can see how it's just you know showing me everything so we could do that and what else do you want to do if we want this particular serif if you want this serif font to actually apply all through all we need to do is also modify the body because everything remember everything is inside the body so if we say body font family and we say serif so all everything has been changed to the serif so it's, it's such a situation we don't even need to put this serif under the header so you don't you don't want to go to section header So you don't want to you don't want to have problems with um you don't want to have to put you know the font family into the header into the section into the footer so you just change the font family all through which is what we've done now let's go ahead and what else do we want to do so fish farm maybe we want to change the h2 <clears throat> the color of the h2 headings so we can say h2 uh let's say color what color should we use so we can say fish farm okay so we can do that then we can also target the lists so we can say a so let's see what we can do. Uh, let's remove these underline, these lines that are under. So we'll use text decoration and we'll say none. So it's gonna take away, take away those text, those underline, those lines that are under the, the lists. So we can do that. We can also change the color of the text in those uh, hyperlinks. In those hyperlinks, we can say brown, for instance. So I say you want, it to, want them to be brown, so fish nets, fish hook. Another thing we might want to do is, let's see, uh, when we hover over those links, what do we want to happen? So when I bring my cursor over each link, let me, let it change color. Okay, let it change color when I hover around it. So let's say, let it change color from brown to blue. So when I hover, you can see it's now blue, okay? When I hover over any hyperlink, it turns blue. Another thing I might say, let me do is, um, when I hover over the hyperlink, let it have an underline, a line beneath it. So I'll now say text decoration, uh, underline, okay? I'll select that. So it turns blue and it's, it and it's underlines, you can see that. You can see that, okay? Um, so that's something else we can do to that. Now let's go to our footer. We'll say footer and we do that. So let's put everything, let's put a background color for our footer. Uh, background color, let's use the bisque or bisque. Same color as our header. Now let's also push everything to the center. So let's say uh, text align center. Let's push everything to the center. Let's put a padding, a padding all around it. Okay. Let's put a padding of, let's say 1%. Let's see what that does. That looks too wide. That looks too wide. I say 0.2%. 
that still looks wide let's use pixel and see two pixel that's wide um, out it's looking awkward it's looking too wide Where are my buttons another thing i could do is i could put borders okay let's just play around it and put borders so you can see already there is a border there okay the edges of where where the where the background colors end those are where the borders will be but let me just show you so let's go to section and let's put border uh, border border not border width um, let's say border style let's do dotted so you can see is dotted um, now let's say margin let's put a margin so what we want to do now is I want to create a space between the two uh, sections so we can say margin we can do margin top so there will be a space at the top of this one there will be a space at the top of this so margin top let's say two percent see what happens there space in between on top of this and a space on top of that okay so that's what i've done because why i didn't do just if i had done margin alone it would have also pushed created some space on the right so i've done imagine right and imagine left which i didn't want to happen so i had to say margin top okay that was what if i if i wanted space here i said margin bottom so but i already have a space there so i don't want any extra space so I put a margin top. You can say margin if you want it to be all around, but you can target. You can say margin top, margin bottom, margin right, margin left, and put the margin where you want. Now this is a text. The space between these texts. You see where my, where my mouse is. The space between this text and this border is the padding. You can add padding. You can create more space there by increasing the padding. The space between this border. And anything outside that border is the margin. You can create more space around that by increasing the margin. Okay, so that's it. So you have padding, you have the border, and you have the um, you have your. We can also change the color of the margin. Margin. Um, sorry, how am I saying? Can change the color of the border so border color so let's say mm, what color do we want our border to have let's put that and see so you can do that you know what i mean you can say black any color um, that you want you can put that as chocolate so the border has the border color has changed to chocolate you can see um you can do that for for the header if you want you could put the border or you might leave that out it's okay just the sections you put borders around each section but the header has no section the footer maybe no section yeah no, no border so that's something you could do what else should we do to these what else can we do here so this is a simple website you can see and you can see that this takes us outside um, there are many things you could do. Let's put a button. Let's create a button. If we go back, so um, inside, let's say outside the main, or let's inside the main, just so we maintain that order. Let's put a button. Unless you can see the button has appeared there. See it there? Let's Call it click. Let's say submit. Even though we're not submitting anything, but let's call it submit. So you see that submit. 
<clears throat> now if we want to we can come here uh, let's say button what should we do to the button let's say uh, let's put the button a bit in the center so we can say margin as margin left margin left let's say 40 percent and see how far it pushes it here so 40 percent margin on the left which is space there pushes it to the center so i think that's fine we can also put a margin top if you know what i mean so we can say margin top let's put a small space there let's say two percent and see yeah just to push it you know create a small space on top so margin top so we've put some space there now let's do it let's do some design in such a that once my mouse actually hovers over this button it changes color let's do that so let's say button here we'll use uh, colon hover okay so button colon hover when i hover over this button what happens same way we did a you know um colon hover so let's say it changes color to green when i hover so well that's color so if you want the text to change color to green as it's doing here that's fine if you want it to be the background color that changes then obviously the background color why the font color remains uh, black yeah so we could do that okay you can actually make this thing to have a random color to so change color randomly each time you click it and that's something that could be done in javascript not in not in um, not in css in javascript so each time i click it gives you you know different colors randomly generated colors you can this you can do that in javascript it's quite fascinating so we have here we are we have a simple decent looking website that has a header has two sections has a button and has a footer okay so um be on the lookout for more videos, both HTML, CSS, and uh, with time, you know, obviously we'll start looking at JavaScript codes as well, where we can now start creating some interactivity. We'll look at how to create a form, um, how to put create text text boxes on HTML, how to design those text boxes using using uh, CSS, and obviously then how to how to make it interactive or you know or responsive in um using javascript another thing we will look at subsequently would be how to how to use your css how to use the media query of the css to make your website responsive to screen size because it looks it may look beautiful and decent on my desktop or if you open these on a phone or a tablet it might look chaotic so to prevent that from happening, you use your media query on CSS to design how exactly you want it, how this you want your website to appear on different screen sizes. So in a different video, we'll look at the media query uh, to create responsive, <coughs> responsive CSS designs. Hope this has been helpful. If you've not subscribed, kindly subscribe and leave a like. Um, just so the algorithm promotes my video. Thank you. Cheers.